Hello, I'm going to show you how to make this coffee cup image in Blender. I will be showing you how to model, texture, and light this scene. Okay, so first, open Blender, and change the render engine at the top to Cycles. Um, click the link in the description and save the image, or you can use any image uh, of any coffee cup that you want. But once you've downloaded the image, press N to open this panel. Go to, oh, let me turn on screencast. Go to background images and select that and open that image. Click add image and open. Open your image. Then press one to go to front view, five to go to orthographic view. And now you should see your image. Um, move this over to about eight. Oh, no, point, point eight. That way it's about in the center. Roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, delete this cube. Hit Shift A. Go to Mesh Cylinder. And change its vertices to 16. All right. Now click S Z to scale this upwards. And then move it upwards a little bit. Then hit S Shift Z to scale it around. Then hit Tab, go to Edit Mode, select these top edges, and hit S. Scale this outward. All right. Then let's delete this face on top. Select the face and delete it. Then select all these edges. Hit E to extrude. Hit S to scale inwards, then go to front view and hit Z, then hit E, and it didn't uh, constrain to Z, so hit Z, bring it down, hit S to scale it inwards, about the same thickness as the top, about there. And, or I guess we could have left that full, yeah, so I don't have to delete that. Um, select edge mode, and we're going to, actually let's not do that, let's just wait. So, in front view, let's hit tab and go to edit mode, hit control R to bring up a loop cut. Place it right here at the top of this handle. Hit R again. Put it at the bottom of this handle. Hit R and above the handle, below this handle. That way we can extrude and come along like that. Alright, so this needs to be rotated so that the face is going straight out, not this vertex. So since we have 16 sides, let's see, 360. Divided by, uh, we only want to spend it half of that, so let's do 32, 11.25. So hit R, 11.25, and now it's perfect. Go to face select, hit 3 to go to side view, select that top face. Go to 1, hit 1 to the side front view, then hit E to extrude this outwards, hit X to go straight out, then hit S and X and 0 make this flat. Then hit S and Z to decrease the thickness, but keep the same width. So that the width is the same, but the thickness is less. Then bring this up and extrude it out to about where the curve would start. You might want to bring that down a little bit more, so hit Shift and Z. There we go. Okay, so the curve is about from right about here. So down here, click 3 cursor for the pivot point and put your cursor below here, right where the curve would end over here, roughly. Then hit Alt R. That's going to go ahead and curve this for you. And right here under steps, just bring this down to like two. That should be plenty. 
Okay. Now hit E to extrude this downwards again. Then hit, oh wait, then uh, we're going to rotate this again. So right along where this is, right about to where it would start over here. Click and put your cursor over there. Then hit Alt R. It's going to rotate it. You can hit extrude, bring this out to where this would start. It's pretty good, but I'd like it to be a little bit higher up. So edit mode, then click on vertices and bring this up just a little bit. So this is about where it should be. Looks good to me. All right, face select and select the faces on the end of this handle and right here. We need to delete those, so delete faces. Select these edges and hit F to fill them. F. All the way around, F. F, okay. So, now let's put, or now it looks, it doesn't look smooth, so let's smooth it out and let's add a subdivision surface. Crank it up to two, so it doesn't, it doesn't look that great. Let's, uh, Click this eyeball, it'll make it hidden. Then add a bevel modifier and click this little arrow to put it above subdivision surface. Then set this to 0 0.01, that's the width and the segments to three. Click on weight so that it only applies to what we decide. So go back into edit mode and select the edges for the outer edge on the top, the bottom outer edge, and the inside bottom edge. And Scroll up, click right here where it says edge data, um, mean bevel weight, slide that up to one. Now click on the subdivision surface eyeball and you can exit edit mode and that's what it looks like so far. Now this doesn't look too good, it looks a little, little sloped, so let's fix that really quick. So in edit mode, control R, put one edge loop here, you want your edges to be your vertex and your edges to be about equally apart. So it's one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Probably two here. So if you, on the mouse, scroll it up, it'll give you a second one. You can just keep scrolling it for more. Two, and then right click, or two, left click, and then right click. That puts it perfect in the center. And then this handle looks kind of straight. So let's add one right here and just pull this one out just a little bit. That looks good. Um, let's do, where did I save this as? Me. Okay, and then just a little pet peeve of mine, coffee cups aren't flat on the bottom. So under pivot, uh, pivot point, select median point, then hit E, scale this in just a little bit, then hit E again and press Z to go up and bring it up a little bit, then hit S, scale it in. All right, now these edges we just made, these loops we just made, they have the mean bevel weight and they don't need it. So select that edge, select this edge, come right over here and remove them. That way it's smooth, because with it, it wasn't gonna look that smooth. It's gonna have a little defect. So let's just smooth that out. Perfect. Okay. And that looks pretty good. Under subdivision surface, I'm gonna go ahead and select three. I think that looks much better. Um, this top edge looks a little funky, so I'm going to take the mean bevel edge off there and put a mean crease of 0.25, I think. Let's see. That looks a little better. Let's do 0.5. There we go. That's much better. And then this inside edge, let's bring this, let's go to front view, hit Z, bring this down just a little bit. There we go. That way it has a nice edge on it. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's add materials. 
So for materials, just click on this little uh, yes, circle, click new, click principled. Now this is a white shader that looks pretty much like ceramic, so we're just going to leave it. But right here where it says material, just click here and type in ceramic. Uh, ceramic. And then we're going to create the coffee. So let's click on face select, click this bottom face, and click control plus. That's going to select more faces around that. And then click shift D to duplicate it, P to separate it. And now you have two objects. One's the coffee cup and one is the coffee. So when you click on the coffee, go to edit mode. Now click those top edges somewhere over here. There it is. Oops. There it is. Go to front view and click Z. Oops. Click. We don't need the bevel and we don't need uh, we can leave the subsurf on there, but bring it down to two. Okay, so we need to bring these down a little bit. Um, right about here. So I fill my coffee all the way up. Then hit S, it just bring it right to the edge where it's just through the glass a little bit. It's just going to make it look a little better. Okay, there isn't a face in there, so let's go ahead and put a face here. There's, there's one on the bottom, but there isn't one on top, so let's hit F. That creates a face, and this is actually going to be inside out. So push A to select all of it, and go to Shading and UVs, and click Recalculate. So now they're all the right way. All right, now this edge, I want it to be crisp. So let's, because right now it's going to be round, like a donut or something. I don't know. Um, so hit Shift Z to undo or to get out of the render. And hit mean bevel weight right here. So now you have a bevel weight of one. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I took the bevel off. So let's go back to bevel and do the same thing the width of 0 0.01, segments of three, and weight. So now this has the weight. And above the subsurface. There we go. Looks pretty good, but coffee kind of, or liquids kind of bundle up around the edges. So let's hit E again, hit S to scale it inwards, and bring it down just a little bit. So it looks like that. Let's bring that in a little bit more. Perfect. Um, perfect. I think it was just a little bit too small. I'm going to hit S and shift to Z to kind of just widen it a little bit and tighten it up. That way it actually goes through the glass a little bit. I just like that better. Okay. There is a crease right here. You can see it. We don't want that. That's We can remove that. Um, just select it if you haven't selected it already. And just take that off. There we go. Okay. Let's go for the coffee. Now let's make a coffee material. So we can remove this ceramic material, we don't need that. Let's go to New, click on Fuse, click Principled, click here on the color, click somewhere on the orange area, and then just click about three quarters of the way down to make it dark, and you have a brown. Shift C, and you can kind of see what it looks like so far. Um, I'm going to Add a little bit more, but I don't know if your computer can handle it, so you can just try and see what happens. Subsurface, do 0 0.01, and let's do a roughness of 0.5, and a clear coat of, let's just do 0.5. Let's just see what that looks like. That looks pretty good to me. Nothing too crazy. We don't have a proper lighting setup yet, so. Let's do that. So let's delete this lamp. We're not going to need that. And go to the world. It's right here, the world properties. Click use nodes. Under the color, click the little dot on the side and click environment texture. So you can get these textures from polygon.com for free. Um, I just looked up one on Google and found one, but there are other ones 
on there. Um, it's not in this folder, but I'm just going to use this one. So now I have an environment texture. Um, usually it's too bright, so I'm just going to do like 0.75. And under ray visibility, check camera. That way we don't have to see that bright yellow. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. Good. All right, now let's create the floor. So shift A, mesh, plane. And then S to scale it really big. To you move it, just put it right at the bottom of this copy cut. You can zoom in if you have to, just to get it a little bit better. Okay. Now you can see it looks like that. Um, now let's add an image from polygon.com as well. So go to materials and select your, your plane, your floor, your table, whatever it is. Click on new. Go to principled. Um, under base color, go ahead and do image texture, open, select uh, whatever kind of floor you have. It could be a table or whatever, but uh, you can go to Polygon and download this one as well. Where is it for me? It is it's in my C drive under textures. Wood flooring, this is straight from Polygon.com for free. All right, now you could use the bump maps and all the other stuff that was in that folder, but all I'm going to do is unwrap this. So you want to go into edit mode, click U when you select everything, and click unwrap. Now that'll let you see the texture. Without it, you won't see the texture there. Okay, and then um, I'm going to click this little arrow in the top right here. Just drag this over, a little cube down here, click that, go to node editor. Now this is a little bit, I guess, advanced, but I'm sure you can do it. So Shift A and click Bump. Type in Bump. Now just put this color dot, just click that dot and put it down to the third one called Height and this Normal into the Normals down here. And that's it. That's all I'm going to make you do. Don't get too complicated. All right, Shift Z. And you can kind of see there's like a texture on there now. There's like a little bit of a grain, a bump. It looks cool. All right. So now let's set up the camera. So an easy way to do it, um, you can go into here and you can delete all these and just make it go straight. If you delete the rotation, it'll just be perfectly straight. But what I'm going to do is just keep it where it's at and hit G, Shift Z, and that will pull it back without going up or down. And I'm just going to slide that pretty far back and then hit G and Z and you just go upwards. So G and shift Z one more time, and G Z upwards. Perfect. And then this plane, G, shift Z to move it forward. Just right there. Let's scale it up a little bit. G, shift Z to just put the whole thing in the camera. There we go. That's all you see now. Perfect. So I think that is it. Let's see, that ceramic is on the cup. So that is it. Um, to make these one object, because I want to rotate them, click on the, the coffee itself, click on the mug while holding shift, then click control P and set pair, or actually hit control J and join them. So now they're one object. If you edit one, you edit both. Okay. Now click on the coffee cup and just rotate it with R. Click Z. And you can spin it however you want. Put it like right there. Boom. Okay. Shift Z will let you render it really quickly. But if you click Shift B, you can select only the camera's view, which just makes it a little bit uh, faster. You know, I don't know. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to do a test render with the same settings just like it is. Hit F12 really quick. Just see what it looks like so that I can zoom in and stuff. So I just hit F12 to render it. Just going to render really quick. 
All right. Not great quality, but hey, got the coffee cup with some coffee and a floor. All right. So now I'm just gonna crank these up to 100. Uh, I have a higher resolution screen, 2560 by 1440. You can probably just leave it where you were. That's fine. Uh, sampling, I'm going to bring this up to about, I don't think it needs to go too high, but 250. Uh, clamp indirect, because there are a couple of fireflies, just hit one. Uh, light paths, I just always bump these up. I can't remember why I do it, it's just habit. And that's it, just save that. Compression, I'm just going to bump it up to 25. I don't know. Okay, good enough. Yeah, okay, 12 again. This one will take a little bit longer to render, it's got to do a bit more. But that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you got this far. Um, this was my first tutorial, so thanks, guys. Bye.